Yo, yo, it's Day Day here with another gameplay. Today we're going to be breaking down one more gameplay, or another gameplay, sorry, I don't know why I said one more, to help you guys get better at Warzone, and to give you guys more tips and tricks to allow you to bring in more kills and get more wins. So, starting off in this particular gameplay, I already have an advanced UAV, so this way I can know where to push people. I already used the red door, and I've already got my loadout because i got enough money in order to do so. The only kill that I have is from when I was dropping in, so you haven't missed much. That's to update you, get you up here, and we're playing buyback solos. And this is also pre mid season four update. All right, so push this guy. He backs up to a point where I'm not able to finish the kill. So knowing that and he's cracked, chances are he's not going to chow. So I immediately look over to the next person. So this way, while I'm focusing on one person, I'm not just going to get slaughtered by another. Again, we've talked about in a lot of videos, don't be tunnel vision on one person. Uh, as soon as I couldn't see that guy, I immediately switched over to the next guy and I go ahead and fry him. Now, I'm down in plates. I know the other guys had enough time to plate up a little bit. Probably got more plates than me. Still got the advanced UAV up. I go ahead and plate up, and I start pushing. Uh, it's like he forgot that I was there and wanted to go loot this guy's body instead of trying to figure out where I was at. So now I'm going to push. I realize that he's gone. He can't be that far. Knowing that, I hear him over on the left side of this. So when I come around, I can see him just... Hiding right there. And he's... It, I get Peeker's advantage, right? Because he's just trying to aim down sights, I get Peeker's advantage and able to, to push him no problem whatsoever. And that's where he should have been in a more unpredictable situation. He should have been a, in a spot where he's able to maneuver and that's slide canceling. You want to learn these movements as much as possible. Slide canceling so you can break people's cameras and out positioning other, your enemy is what's going to help you win these gunfights. I have the advantage even though he has a little bit of a high ground in that gunfight, just because I'm able to have Peeker's advantage by jumping around the corner when he's aiming down sights. All right, moving on to the next gunfight. Um, there's at least two people up here I know for a fact. The guy that I was originally sniping at me, uh, which I ended up getting away and plating up, and then the guy rolls up on a truck. So the guy rolls up on a truck. Uh, I kill that guy right there. Knowing that he was shooting at someone else, I go ahead and get him because they were already weak. That's third party. Third parties are your best friend until it happens to you. <laughs> but whenever you can third party another team, that's how you're going to get your most kills. That's that's how the pros are able to bring in these high kill games, right? So I see they're, they're already fighting. I want to take out the first guy as fast as I can so he doesn't kill the second guy. So this way I can kill the second guy. I take him out, and then when I go to shoot the second guy, he's like two shots away from being dead. So not only do I get the kill because the first guy didn't weaken him enough, but... I'm also don't have to worry about a serious gunfight back to back because they're already weak from each other. So I quickly get those two kills. Um, I knew that there was another guy down here, so I'm trying to find him. He's out in the open. He's trying his best to get to a window. It doesn't do him any good. That's just textbook easy. Don't really need to break that one down. Um, so now I want to go ahead and loot the stuff. I didn't want to loot until after I took out the guy that was down at the bottom because I knew that he was there because of the UAV. I'm going to pause this for one second. Knowing, paying attention to more than one person when you have a UAV is what separates the good players from the best players. If you're able to get more than one kill out of one UAV, then you are doing really good. So you know, so when you, when you get the advanced UAV, you actually pull up the map and you mark someone that you want to go to and then you start pushing someone. Right, So whenever you kill the first person, now you can go to where the mark is. In that particular fun fight, I didn't have time to pull up a map, so I just had to know there was a guy below me and there was two guys above me. And that's all I needed to know, and I got to just look for him at that point. I hear this guy's coming back in because I hear enemy dropping in the AO. So I go ahead and just get a couple shots on him. Nothing really break down there. He tries to to fly away. The only thing I would tell you, and I see this happen a lot when I'm playing with some of my buddies, is they when they want to pull their chute way too early. What you need to do is go into your settings and turn off automatic deploy of parachute. Okay, turning that off, you're probably going to splat into the ground a couple times until you figure out the exact moment you pull your parachute. But you don't want to pull the. You don't want to be pulling your parachute too early because you're just a flying target. And that's what that guy did. He had auto deploy on. I could tell about the height that he that the parachute pulled in. You want to be pulling your parachute right at the last moment possible. So this way you're not just a standing target or a floating target. And that's exactly what that guy was. Was a floating target. Easy day. I know there's a guy here because I ended up dying to him. Uh, and he was just 
wouldn't move. As I was coming back in, I had a heartbeat sensor that I found and I uh, scanned that building and he was in there. Also, he was into another gunfight. Tunnel vision itself and he wants to hold down a building and wait to the last minute the gas is coming in. That's something you shouldn't do. Now, if he rotated sooner before the gas, then he would have had a spot to run to. Whenever he turned around and ran back the opposite direction, the gas was right there. So now the gas is killing him unless he has a gas mask. But even if he does have a gas mask, there's nowhere for him to go because he hasn't allowed for proper time. You guys want to make sure you're rotating at the correct moments, right? You don't want to wait to the very last minute ride the gas in. That comes into play at the very end whenever it's like the last circle or the last two circles. That's when you want to start riding the gas. But even then, you still want to give yourself like a good 20 feet between you and the gas. So you've got a place to go. So you, you can actually retreat if you need to before you have to start rotating. Uh, this guy doesn't do that, and that's what ends up costing him. Easy kills. You can see I got the revenge right there. On this particular spot, there's a guy behind me. It's my bounty. Um, and then there's a guy that I believe on the built the top uh, behind me. But disabling the vehicle, uh, I get lucky with that just because of how fried it already was. Um, this guy tries to challenge, but because I'm already in process of doing a jump shot, I break his camera. I get Peekers advantage. Guys, jump around. I don't. Know, I think he had a shotgun. No, he had an MP5. So I pick up the MP5 because I don't have uh, my. I picked up a Ghost class whenever I was coming back from that one gunfight we got into, uh, and I just wanted to pick up someone else's SMG. So I'm using the C58 and now the MP5. Um, anytime that I see plate boxes or armor boxes, uh, sorry, armor boxes or munition boxes, whether I need it or not. I'm throwing it down because I don't want the enemy to have it. As you can see right there, I only really needed one plate. I threw it down and took the plate, but no one else can get plates now from that armor box. Even though the gas is coming in, it's just a habit that I have, and I don't want my enemy to have any kind of tools to utilize. So obviously there's a guy that's in this building. We can assume that he's on the rooftop, so I don't want to sit there and try and, and play the fight. I know the gas will be coming in in 12 seconds. So I grab the Bertha and I want to position myself to where I can get the kill whenever he comes out. And in the process, I see this guy trying to transition, go into the safe zone. And that just goes where you need to use vehicle. You need to utilize vehicles. If this guy's in a vehicle, I don't get that kill. But because that guy's trying to run out in the open, I'm able to get that kill. Uh, I see this guy in the open as well. He's not utilizing a vehicle. He's trying to hide behind a tree. I jump out. Again, as you can see, he's focusing on the truck because he thinks I'm still in it. He's not paying attention to me. He's paying attention to the vehicle on the minimap. And I'm easily able to get the kill. Start using vehicles because it's going to make a difference. A lot of people think you die because of vehicles. No, you die because you're in the open. Yes, sometimes you're driving along and, and you die because you're in the vehicle. But for the most part, it's because you're not in the vehicle. I hate it when I do that. Comment down below if you accidentally ever get jump, uh, jump scared and you hit the mini map button. I do that all the time. I get by and I hit the mini map button. All right, so as you can see, I die uh, and I come back. So I'm going to go right back to my stuff because the guys across the map, the chance of making that run is slim. So I'm taking the gamble to come back and get my stuff. I'm able to get all of it back, including my money. So now I already automatically have the money to buy back in. Now I'm just looking to see if I can see that guy crossing anywhere, and I can't. I see him, one guy right there. I don't know if that's the guy that killed me or not. He's got the gas to his rear, so I feel like it's a safe push across. I don't feel comfortable crossing areas like this or just running around in general without a vehicle, right? Again, I, vehicles are one of the most important tools. The entire time I think there's a guy here, and it ends up being a guy up in the air. So when you're playing buyback solos or buyback period, and you get someone on a hit, if you don't see someone in front of you, look up. They're probably in the air hovering, especially since we're already on the third circle uh, and it's closed in, and then we're working on our fourth circle. It's probably somebody up in the air. And I'll finally look up and I see, okay, it's him. So I start getting a couple shots on him. I am not the best person to beam someone out of the air, but that's not the most important thing because getting him weak before he hits the ground gives you the utmost advantage when you're going into that gunfight. So now I need to push um, to some cover. 
I know there's a gunfight going on over here, so I want to get involved. There's a the guy that I was shooting at earlier. Knowing that he's weak, I can go ahead and push in. He's probably not going to have any guns, and even if he does, like I said, he's going to be weak. The chance of him finding two or three places that he needs is, is not, not really in his favor. So on that particular gunfight, I immediately start shooting. He gets shots on me first. So instead of me trying to sit there and fight like most people would do, I immediately want to turn to my right, turn to my left, so I can, I want to turn to my right and then jump to my left. It gives me more of an advantage or more of a distance in my jump and then slide cancel over here, right? I don't want to continue to fight a fight I know I'm going to lose. I want to give myself another advantage. I want to give myself another opportunity, another perspective to fight this fight. And that's what I do. And he tries to chase me and it ends up, that's what ends up costing him. So... Now I've got 16 grand. I've got my plates back up. I'm going to be able to buy UAV. And I see there's a guy above me. All right? The arrow tells me he's above me. So the gas is going to be pushing him off. I've got a gas mask. If I need to ride out the gas, I can. I, this guy comes back. Bitch. Easy kill. Not really much to explain there. But I still got this guy that's above me. So what I want to do now is create some distance. I trust myself with the C-58. Again, this is before the mid-season update. I still think the C-58 is very viable in case you're looking for a gun to use. Um, so make sure you're checking that out and, and seeing what it is and also the growl. But going back to what I was saying, I trust my C-58 skills. I'm going to be able to beam this guy. I'm giving a couple jump shots to the side as I'm doing it. And he's just, we're both out in the open. It's just whoever's got the better shot. And I had the better shot on him. And I had a C-58, which is just destroying people left and right. So now we're 14 kills into it. Um, and we're, we're actually closing in on, on the end of the video, but I see there's a truck up here. I know that there was the supply thing that, uh, where someone has shot down a vehicle. So someone's probably up there confirming that is this guy that is creep walking, crouch walking. We talked about that. Don't crouch walk out in the open because this is what's going to happen to you. I got a dead silence. I pop it and run up here before we even break the peak. I'm able to go ahead and finish him off. And right there it is. There's the guy. But he gets sniped. And I didn't know that at the time. I, then I, I start to see his loot. Because uh, I remember there wasn't a loot underneath the truck or right there at the door. And then the fact that the truck blows up tells me that he's, he's not there anymore. So I was able to notice where he was due to my environment. That's why I always say... Uh, situation awareness is super, super important. If I didn't know or pay attention to the fact that there was a loadout thing up there from the supply chopper, I would have never known that there was a guy up there. All right, so what ends up happening now is I push forward trying to get this guy, and you're going to see where tunnel vision is going to cost me. Spoiler alert, right? I get so caught up in one person that I don't take my own advice and keep a 360 awareness of what's going on around me. I know that he's in the train car. So I'm going to try and get a peeker's advantage of some sort. Try to like cut the edges, cut cut the pie, but I get murdered. 